Hello, friends of the internet. Um, so before I get started on this interview, I wanted to preface and talk face to face with you. Um, the first thing you will notice in the interview that is to come um, that I've recorded about two weeks ago um, is that there are some stops, um, some hard stops and some weird edits going on. Um, to be fully transparent, um, what's going on there is I was having some internet connection issues. Uh, I tried to rectify this by asking for the publicist copy um, of the interview uh, because we both on both sides recorded a um, version of the interview and uh, both versions had these weird um, cutouts to where my entire question didn't um, get through. It, 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 didn't, it didn't record my whole question. So um, I'll have subtitles uh, on screen, uh, hopefully, uh, during this. I'm still editing the interview, so um, th this is the fun part of the job, is navigating around these issues. But um, so if you want to watch the following video, uh, just turn subtitles on. Uh, there should be a CC um, icon right about here um, on, on the bottom right on YouTube. Um, but another option you, you'll have, um, I don't normally do this, but since um, this interview is heavily edited to get around Zoom issues, um, what I've decided to do is publish a transcript of the interview over on my website, austinb.media, uh, as well as on my Patreon. Um, that'll all be there for you to read, and, and you can read along uh, as well as using the subtitles. Um, but yeah, I, if you want to go read it uh, rather than watch it, totally fine. You have that option. Um, and then another thing I wanted to preface is because I recorded this two weeks ago, there's going to be some, I'm going to talk about it like it, the first step is just coming out. Um, well, it came out two weeks ago, and it's still expanding its theatrical rollout. Um, so it's been at a few, um, it's, it's had a few uh, uh, theatrical screenings already. So just kind of keep that in mind as you watch the following interview. I'm going to get out of your hair. Um, thanks again to the directors and producers of the first step it was a really enjoyable interview but with that i'm gonna get out of here and let you watch the interview until next time hello friends of the internet i am here with brendan and lance kramer one of them is uh the director one of them is the producer i believe uh lance you're the director um of the first step and brandon you're the producer let me know other if i got around. that wrong other way around other way around um uh and if it was funny is i actually made the note director and producer in that order respectfully um to make sure i got it right but i still got it wrong um but we're here okay. uh but we're here today to talk about the documentary uh the first step um it it's going to be in theaters in uh new york and la this weekend uh on february 17th and then i saw on the website that you're going to be expanding week by week um fact you'll actually be coming pretty close to uh where I live, I think the closest one is Fayetteville uh, in March. So where, um, where, where are you based? Uh, the closest me metro area would be um, Branson, mm -hmm. but um, but there are no theaters in, in Branson for that'll play actual independent movies. So it's either going to Springfield, Missouri, or um, going to Little Rock or Fayetteville. Um, so um, it's, it's playing in theaters uh, this weekend. And then I, it, it's been kind of a journey. Um, I, I remember seeing the first step constantly in my inbox. It's taken, gosh, two years because I was covering Tribeca 2021. Um, and I was covering AFI Docs 2021 and then Bentonville and you've showed up at like what thirty other f film festivals, uh, in the meantime, in these uh, two years. I think it's actually 
a little over, I think it's been 41 or 42. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, but with that said, uh, welcome both of you um, on this on this long road uh, to get it to theaters. I'm so glad it's actually getting a theatrical release um, when it debuted at Tribeca. I, I don't know why I always assume um, the worst whenever something de debuts at a festival. I'm like, oh, it's gonna just going to get a streaming premiere like on HBO Max or something. Um, but I'm so glad you guys are actually getting a theatrical uh, debut. Um, so for those who don't know about First Step, uh, it's about um, it, it's about two different things, I, I would say. Uh, in one part, part, you're telling Van Jones' story um, and how he uh, became who he is today. Um, and you're also telling the story about the First Step Act, which um, was a bill passed in 2018. Um, and, and, and it's insane. One of the better political documentaries I've seen um, since Knock Down the House, I believe, um, back in, when did that come out? 2019, 2018, 2019, something like that on Netflix. Um, so I, I do want to start um, with talking about the 2016 election. Um, I, what, what were your feelings about in regards to compared to the 2012 or 20, 2008 election, how that was different. 2016 election was pretty different. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, the, Donald Trump becoming elected president of the United States was a, uh, a horrific blow um, to at least myself, my, my family, uh, all my friends, communities, um, you know, a lot, a lot of communities that I'm, you know, connected to. I know not for everybody. Obviously, a lot of people were very happy on that day. Um, for for me, it was a, a terrible moment, and it wasn't just what Trump stood for, but it was the growing divide and how that election just ripped it. As as terrible as it was, and as polarizing as it was. It just got a thousand times worse on that day. Um, and, you know, we sat down with Van over a cup of tea and, you know, we had known Van for many years and he basically told us that a lot of the people in his life were going to be opposing and fighting against this administration at all costs. And he wanted to be one of the few people who was trying to reach across the aisle and see, is there any possibility that something bipartisan could happen on these issues that he's been fighting for his whole life? And Lance and I, as documentary filmmakers, very concerned about the divisions in the country, felt like we had a relationship and access to a civil rights leader who was about to set out on a very perilous journey um, in an incredibly divisive moment, and that would make for a very important historical document and story for the public to learn from. Jared Kushner and Van didn't know each other. The First Step Act bill did not exist at this point in time, but we knew that a film that shows what bridge building and action looks like in this moment in time would be incredibly instructive on some pathway forward. I loved about the film is how it um, portrays both sides of uh, a community. Specifically, you go into West Virginia um, and you get to see, uh, there's this, uh, I think it's a lunch scene where the, these two opposing sides are just talking to one another, which is this kind of rare sight. Um, and I kind of want to ask what, um, what lessons during that production did, and how did it kind of influence um, representation of uh, people's political ideals in this era where it seems to be one side or the other? I think that one of the thing, one of the things I hope that comes through in the film is that, so to speak, you know, ordinary people, grassroots leaders, the people who aren't necessarily household names, um, 
but who are on the front lines of many of these you know, issues, especially something like criminal justice reform um, or the addiction crisis, that uh, leadership from them can be what model is, can be the model for how leadership from you know, state or federal national elected officials should behave. And I think a lot of times we kind of expect maybe that we're gonna have an example in the White House or in the Senate or Congress or these more very visible public offices and that that's supposed to some, somehow ripple down. And in theory or in an ideal world, it maybe should be that way. But I think in practice in the world that we're living in today, uh, we don't get that at the time. And so then it really is incumbent on a community level to try and um, not just work through these kinds of really significant problems and, 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 and divisions and differences, but also try to model how to do it differently. And I think that the beautiful thing about the people you were speaking to and speaking about in the film is that they're really doing the work. You see it right before your eyes in these very small, but I think beautiful and powerful moments, like in the diner that you're talking about or in the home living room of uh, someone's home. And then they're building those relationships together and then taking that example to Congress to say, if we can do this, you guys ought to be able to do it too. And I think that, and a bottom-up approach is something that uh, I wish we could see more of. And I think that if it can be amplified, uh, there's, there's a lot of potential to have tremendous change. And it's something that actually all of us, each one of us can do. Yeah, even just um, in another scene, you see Van Jones, which I'm envious. You could tell Van this if you've ever talked to him. Uh, on a regular basis, I am jealous of the little um, library he has where he can just stand on this little platform and he just moves horizontally. Um, I would love that for um, a movie room. Just oh, here, let me get Silence of the Lambs. Let's just motor get a motorized platform in here. Um, but, um, you know, you see books uh, oh, by Che Guevara um, and other political leaders and he makes this um, statement where, how are you going to understand somebody, your opponent if you're not listening to them? Which I thought was so intriguing. Um, especially, you know, you talk about Jared Kushner. There's a lot of them in here. And I'm like, well, the first time you see him, you're just like, wait, what? He's talking, Van Jones is talking to Jared Kushner. And what, wait, that's possible that two people can, who fundamentally... I think disagree with one another can just be like, oh yeah, I believe this. I believe this. I can, um, as a human being, um, which I found fascinating. Um, and kind of going backwards a little bit, um, let's talk a little bit about the First Step Act. Um, what were your, um, I, um, what was your first encounter, for lack of a better term, with the or maybe even Van Jones, whichever comes first? Yeah, I mean, just to speak to your earlier point about just the shock of seeing somebody like Van Jones sitting with Jared Kushner. Once we identified that we were telling a story about bridge building, it became critical. Lance and I had conversations, the entire film team had conversations. And the conversation was, we need to do an exceptional job, not just representing Van, but all the different actors in this story. And I say actors, not people performing, but uh, people, re the real people, obviously. And that included people on the left that vehemently opposed the First Step Act because it did not go far enough and it wasn't comprehensive reform. Somebody like Patrice Cullors, who is the co-founder of Black Lives Matter. And it meant sharing her point of view, not just as, not just as somebody opposed to the bill, but really trying to understand what does it mean to be an abolitionist? Why does she oppose the bill? And why is that important? Uh, she's not an antagonist in the film. She's a person with a point of view 
And uh, that included Jared Kushner as well. And, you know, all the horrible things that the Trump administration was doing, they're all in the film, but also there, you know, there were a lot of people who were, you know, or not a lot, but some people that were telling Lance and I, you know, you can't, don't, just really don't put Jared in the movie. Don't put Kellyanne in the movie. Don't put Trump in the movie. It's going to be too alienating to people. And, but that's the reality. These people did horrible things and yet they still worked on this bill that got tens of thousands of people released from federal prison. Van, Jessica, Lewis, all the advocates that worked on this bill had to sit with that discomfort in actually being in person with these people and building these relationships and dealing with the blowback. So if they can do that in person, if somebody like Tylo James, who's an organizer in South Central LA, whose brother is incarcerated right now for a life sentence, can walk and have a conversation, walk into the Trump White House and have a conversation with Kellyanne Conway, audiences should have the stomach and the wherewithal to be able to sit with that experience in a movie theater and be able to walk out. And so that's that's been the hope and the design of the film. It also has allowed the film to resonate with a very diverse audience base because unlike many films on the left where a conservative person would not typically watch it we've screened the film in a lot of places like Arkansas and Mississippi and Iowa where people that don't like Van people that don't like Cory Booker or Kamala Harris or Joe Biden they've sat and they've watched the film and because people that they do like Jared Kushner Mike Lee Rand Paul are in the film and are given a fair representation, they're able to actually engage with the film. And um, that's been, you know, a really meaningful experience. Our first touch point with the bill, I mean, I, we were there from the very beginning of the, of the, of the, of the journey. Um, I was with Van when he learned that Jared Kushner was trying to do something on criminal justice reform. And, you know, there was a lot of questions at that time. It's like, okay, is this just like a smoke and mirror show? Is this, is this something genuine? And, you know, Van, you know, to his credit, he was like, look, I'm going to go meet with Jared Kushner. A lot of people are giving me a hard time for doing it, but I'm going to do it. I want to see if he's genuine on this. And if you guys want to capture that, you know, by all means, uh, you know, do that. And, you know, at that first meeting, you know, you kind of like, show up with a camera you have no idea if you're going to get access to anything because there's you know like a million different barriers to filming jared kushner but you know slowly we were able to sort of work around that like that for that scene where you see van and jared meeting for the first time that was the first meeting you know we're like we're there they're shaking hands they're meeting each other that's like you know meeting number one and you know sometimes as a documentary filmmaker you just kind of had to you have to take a leap of faith and just show up and capture it. Let me just say also, everyone's expectations, including mine, was that this was going to be an attempt at passing criminal justice reform, not a, a bill that would pass. So it was literally up until the last minute, we all thought this bill was going to fail. I'm not saying, I mean, I think Van had hope, other people had hope, but, um, you know, it literally until the day it passed it was like okay this is going to be a story about people trying to get something done and there's, it's going to be an informative story nonetheless and then on the, it, it literally passed the day before christmas right before the longest government shutdown in american history it was one of the last things that occurred and you know van calls it a christmas miracle i gotta say like you know whatever your faith is, like I was in the room that day, it was, it was a wild thing that that actually got accomplished because Trump was wavering. Then, you know, Kim Kardashian came in and helped and other advocates helped to get it over the finish line. It was a, it was a strange coalition of, you know, grassroots activists who've been fighting this for decades, political leaders, some of which have been fighting it for decades, some of which were, you don't expect to be fighting for criminal justice reform, celebrities. I mean, it was, it was a wild roller coaster to, uh, to bear witness to. Yeah, it was wild times. Um, and um, something, you know, how, 
how long has it been since um filming I, I are there results on how this the first step act is working yeah well the film took about three years we were in production for about three years we were at, in the edit for about two years and it's been almost two years it's been a, you know well the bill itself has passed has been law for about four years and um when the film was completed, there were just over 10,000 people. The estimates were about 10, just over 10,000 who had come home. And now estimates are as high as, you know, uh, 75,000 people who have been, who are home through one aspect or another of the bill's provisions. That's great. So, um... I mean, that's, that's like, that's tens of thousands of people that are home with their families. Um, you know, we haven't met obviously all of them, but we've met many. And just even meeting one person who's home, you know, years or decades early, who probably should have never been in prison in the first place. It's it's pretty incredible. So then when you multiply that, it's 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 profound. Yeah, for sure. Um i i'm glad it's actually um doing something um and actually having an effect on lives but you say ten thousand. i think that's uh, roughly the number i think i saw at the end of the film yeah um um but i'm, I'm so glad to hear it's working uh and i hope uh even if it's just for you know maybe watching a new documentary or learning more about the first step act um i'd encourage those who you know have it have the uh, movie in a theater near you to go see the first step i'll have a uh, links to the screenings in the um uh, description below um and i i hope uh people see it uh in theaters maybe, maybe even i hope um i know some theaters are doing i believe they're doing conversations like q and a's uh, I saw that you're the one you're doing this week as a Q&A. Um, um, actually, all the theater. So literally every single screening of this movie will have a post-screening discussion that features either national leaders or leaders from the community where the film is being screened. And there is not a place you can see the film where that's not happening. So every single presentation of the film is being programmed in partnership with organizations working on the front lines, whether it's criminal justice reform, the addiction crisis, just trying to build bridges and find common ground on anything. There's plenty of opportunities that if you see the film, you can plug in and get involved with any of the work that these organizations are doing. And that'll just continue as the film also just eventually finds its home on streaming. But just for now, in the theatrical experiences, that's that's the whole model. Um, and if you want to find out if the film is playing in a city near you, go to firststepfilm.com and the entire list of all the theatrical uh, screenings will be there. And like Lance said, if it's not playing in a city near you, stay tuned by following the movie on at First Step Movie. And we'll be sharing information about where to see the film uh, digitally soon thereafter. Well, thank you so much for your time, Brendan and Lance, on this uh, hectic, uh, busy m morning after the Super Bowl. Um, um, I, I hope people see this. And um, thanks again for your time. Yeah, thank you so much for having us. Really appreciate it.